Welcome to the seventh part in this video series on creating atmospheric night renders in V-Ray for Rhino. In this video we're going to be looking at the more natural objects in this scene and adding some grass onto this bank and also some flowers and other more natural objects to kind of embed our building into this grassy bank that it sits on. Now we're going to be working from the previous file we set up where we set up our kind of reflective water and we're purely going to be focusing on this kind of base that the building is sitting on here. So I'm going to minimize my frame buffer there and we're just going to isolate and select that sort of grassy bank here. Now the first part of this session we're going to look at is adding in some grass onto this bank and to do this we're going to be using V-Ray Fur to replicate kind of strand and hair like grass on this bank here. To add V-Ray Fur to an object we just need to select the object we want to add it to, go up to our V-Ray menu and click this add fur to selection. This can also be found under V-Ray, V-Ray objects and add fur to selection there. Once we've added it, you'll see little kind of strands will kind of come off your object. And actually, as you can see on mine, mine are coming off it, but on the reverse side. Now, this can sometimes happen where V-Ray Fur thinks that the kind of upwards face of your model is actually the downwards one, and vice versa. So if you have this happen to you where your kind of fur is occurring, but on the underside of the object, we'll need to flip that round. And to do that, we can just select the object type in DIR into your command here and this stands for direction and this will kind of show the direction of the objects and as you can see on here the arrow is sort of pointing downwards if we want to flip that we just select a sort of point on the object left click our mouse and it will flip it upwards like so if we then hit enter it will reset those normals of that direction and our fur is now facing up as we can see here so in the preview we can see the fur kind of replicated as these lots of little lines across the surface but if we turn on our render open up the frame buffer and just kind of render this out you'll see this is actually being replicated by these kind of weird strands of hair which are really tall and quite thick at the moment so in the render engine they look slightly different to how they do in the kind of rhino file and this is because these lines are essentially a placeholder to tell you that there's a v-ray fur on this object. Now in order to start to kind of scale this down and make this look more like grass, I'm going to open up the V-Ray Asset Editor here, move it across, and we're just going to locate the fur in the V-Ray Geometry under Fur there. And I'm going to open up the right hand window for that. Now I'm going to let this render out as we're kind of dialing in this fur. And as you can see, once we've selected it, we have a few parameters that we can adjust on these settings. The first of these is the length, and this will be based on the units in your scene. So I'm using meters, so the length of this fur is set to four meters. So I'm gonna scale this down, and we're gonna make this 0.3 meters tall, 30 centimeters. Now these are still coming up as a bit blobby because that thickness is still really wide. So I'm gonna lower this down to 0.00, let's do it 0.003, so that's sort of three millimeters thickness. So then now there are lots of little sort of strands of hair and you can see them sort of very gradually in the distance there. They're quite subtle. For a view like this, where we're looking at it from quite far away, we can always up that thickness slightly more than what it would be, just so we can see them a bit more clearly. But it's just trying to find a sort of nice balance between there. Now, as well as that, we have this distribution, and this is kind of set by the count per area. And this essentially is we up this value, we'll get more strands of grass on our bank. So if we up this first to 100, you'll see that this will kind of really increase the size and the amount of these kind of strands of grass. And what we're looking for is a good coverage across the whole of our surface here. And actually by setting it to around 100, we're kind of getting that coverage that we want there. So I'm quite happy with the coverage we've got on this. And the last thing we need to do with our fur material is add a material to it. And to do that, we can just scroll down, go to material, turn this on, and under my material, I'm gonna set this to grass here. And it will take the same kind of material that we're using for the grass and apply it to those strands of hair. Now, we can't really see it that clearly because actually the base that it sits on has also got the same grass material. And if I kind of change my camera view here, we'll just look at it from this angle and render it out. 
we should be able to see it a little bit more clearly. There. And there, as you can see this render, you can start to see those little strands of hair kind of coming up and we can pan it down slightly so we can see these in a bit more detail. But because the kind of base of this surface is also that grass material, it's quite hard to identify these kind of grass-like strands on there. So what I usually do at this point is actually select that base surface and I'm going to switch it from a grass texture over to the mud texture we use for the bottom of the river here. And we're just going to apply that to the selection. And with that sort of switched out, you'll then see that the grass is now a little bit more visible in there and we have a much darker surface that it sits on. So this makes it look a little bit more realistic that it's sort of a grass texture sat on top of a more earthy texture in that location. And there you can see our sort of strands of grass on there. So let's just stop the render and we're going to go back to our main view. Now minimize this down, make sure we're in that camera one and re-render it to have a look at our scene. So now we've got our sort of basic level of grass applied across this surface. And the second thing I want to do is add in some small flowers on here as well, just to kind of add a little bit of variety to my kind of grass texture that's applied on here. To do this, I'm going to be using a model downloaded from Polyhaven again, and we're going to be using this sort of shrub, this sorrel model here to give us some little flowers that we're going to add into our scene. Now I've just downloaded this, I've kept it at quite low resolution, the 1K, because they're going to be very small in this scene and I'm going to be scattering lots of them across the surface of my model. So I don't want it too heavy in terms of its geometry, otherwise it's going to start to take up a lot of sort of processing power. So once you've downloaded this, what we're going to do is we're going to import it into our Rhino file. And I've got the sort of model here, it comes with a sort of series of textures that we can use and then also the 3D object, which is this one here. Now to import this in, we're just gonna to go to File, Import, locate that model there and hit Open. Click OK on these settings and click Yes here. And that will import the model in. And it usually imports it in right at the kind of origin point. So I usually just move it off into the distance somewhere where we can't see it. And it's gonna be quite small. So we're gonna zoom in to have a look at it. Now, what you also want to do is just rotate these round so they're facing upwards as well. So they're all sort of pointing up to the sky. Once we've got those, I'm then going to just set my view here to rendered. And this will allow me to see the material on them. And as you can see, they come in with no material attached. So we're going to have to create the material in order for these to look like flowers and like kind of plants. So to do that, we're going to open up V-Ray here. I'm going to make a new material. We'll call this plant, like so. And then we're going to use the textures we got from that download in order to kind of make this look like the flower. Now I'm going to start with the diffuse. And we're just going to add in bitmap there. We're going to locate this texture to add this in and load it in like so. And that will add the kind of color of this flower. Now ensure, to ensure that it's properly cut out from this surface, we also need to add what's called an opacity map. And that's this kind of black or white one here. And what this does is it tells Rhino and V-Ray to cut out the flowers based upon this black and white map. So wherever it's white, it will leave it solid. And wherever it's black, it will chop it out of that background. So if we go to the opacity, load in another bitmap, select that opacity map and click back again you'll see that's now chopped it out from the background now we also have a kind of normal and a roughness map here which will kind of change the reflectiveness of this and also the kind of normal or the bumpiness of this surface now because these flowers are going to be so small in this scene i'm actually not going to apply these but we are going to add a little bit of reflection to make them slightly shinier to do that we're just going to up the reflection color to a mid gray and we're going to lower the glossiness to around the 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So it's got a little bit of shine to it. Once we've got that, we're then going to select all of our flowers, right click and apply this material to selection. And once we've done that, you can see here that these are now kind of rendering out correctly. Now, actually in this scene, 
all I want, I've got my kind of grass already, but all I want are the flowers to show. So I'm actually just going to be using this single model here to apply to my surface to add these flowers in. Now to kind of add these flowers and scatter them across the surface, we're going to need to use what's called V-Ray's Scatter tool, which allows us to take a small object like this and scatter it across a larger surface. Now in order to use this, I'm just going to put this back to shaded and we're going to zoom out again. If you want, when you've got sort of very small objects like this, what I'll usually do is draw a square kind of around them. That way you can't lose them if you sort of zoom out because they can be quite hard to relocate yourself again. It's always good to kind of put them at a corner of a piece of geometry so you don't misplace them. So we're going to scatter the geometry on this surface here. But what you'll find is if I go into V-Ray, create a new scatter geometry, just by going to the create asset geometries and scatter here and we'll call this flowers if we apply this to our geometry by right clicking on the flowers and clicking apply to selection it actually loses that fur scatter we've got and replaces it with the flowers one now we don't want this we want to keep the kind of fur geometry in place so i'm going to reapply that back to this selection like so and in order to have the flowers we actually need to make a copy of this object and I'm just going to copy it vertically for now let's move it right up here and we're going to put this plane slightly above or slightly below I have to say of the fur one so we've got kind of two planes sandwiched together and that allows us to have a scatter on one of them which we'll be applying here and a fur on the other. Now the way the scatter works is you right click and apply it to this object and there where it says add guests we're then going to go back to our flowers here we're just going to zoom in select the one we want which is this one here and hit add guest there and what this will do is it will then scatter it over that geometry as we can see here. Now what I'm going to do next is we're just going to move this plane back down zoom in and we're essentially just going to move it so it sits just below that geometry like so so it's just below my other one now with that scatter selected we're then going to go down and under the scale we're going to up the scale of this flower i'm going to up it to a three to four scale now you can see it's much bigger on that plane there the main aim is that we want this to poke above the grass so we need to sort of scale it up so it's around the same height as one of those little lines there and it's always good when you're doing this just to go back to your camera open up your frame buffer and do a quick render to check that the flowers are just poking through the top of the grass and we just want to very subtly see them dotted across the landscape and there you can see they're just coming through what is always good with this as well is it might be that you want to just sort of lower down the scale of your sort of scatter, let's do it three to four, and also lower the height of your fur as well, just to make them kind of balance them out against one another. So let's put this on a 0.2. And we just want to be able to see both of them. So we're getting the flowers and we're getting the kind of fur in there. Now, as you can see, there's not many flowers. You can kind of see little pink dots occurring across the surface but there's not many of them and that's because the density on my scatter is still quite low so what we'll do is we're going to up this density and we're going to put it up to a 10 for now and see how this affects the render and you'll see once we've done that we've got a lot more kind of in the background here and we can now start to see these occurring more on the surface of the geometry here as well and what I want to do is just have enough of these so we can kind of get a little sort of mattering of them across the grass surface there as well. Now actually with my flowers we're going to pause the render for a second, minimize this down. At the moment they're kind of evenly covering the surface as you can see here and we've got a preview of sort of all of these covering the surface of that object but I actually want them to be in small little clusters across that surface to give the kind of illusion of little pockets of flowers that are growing across this lawn. To do this, we need to kind of add a map into the density slot here to control exactly where those flowers will be placed. So if we click on this density map, 
let's scroll down and we're going to add in a noise B into this. And what this would do is it will add a kind of patchy texture to control the placement of those flowers. Now what I'm going to do with this, to make it a little bit more kind of strong, so instead of a kind of faded gradient, we're going to up the low level to a 0.45 and lower the high level to a 0.55. What that does is it basically makes it a very strong black and white patch. And as you can see in the preview on the left, what this means is wherever it's white, the flowers will occur and wherever it's black, they'll disappear. So it gives that kind of patchiness of it. And then we can up that size to a bigger size, size one here, to give us this sort of patchy flower look. And what I usually do is go back to the camera view, make sure we're sort of selected and have a look in this view and just dial in that size until it kind of occurs in nice little patches like this. I might just put it on 0.4 this one. You can always change the phase as well to move that across the landscape if you want to put it in slightly different positions. And once you're happy we can always then just render it out to see how it's looking. And there you can see my flowers are just sort of poking through there. Now if you want to just up the scale of these we can always go back into my scatter up the scale slightly. Let's put this as a 4 to 5 again, see how that looks. And it's all just about kind of adjusting it, testing it until it's looking right in the scene. And I think that's kind of getting there. I'm going to just up the amount here to 20, which will just double the amount of flowers we can see. getting a nice kind of scattering of them. So I think that's looking quite good in the scene. We've got our kind of grass, we've got our flowers sort of occurring in little patchy places across that lawn. And for a sort of final tweak I want to do to these, I actually want to change the colour of these flowers from a pink to a white flower so they look like daisies on this lawn here. Now to do this we're actually going to use Photoshop and I'm just going to take this diffuse colour here we're going to open it up in Photoshop like this and then all we're going to do is just select the magic wand tool up the tolerance to about 50 select this pink area like so and then I'm just going to attach a hue saturation lower that down so it's more of a sort of gray color up it up the brightness here we're going to make it a little bit warmer so it's not sort of fully gray and I usually just kind of play around with this until it's a little bit of a warm tone up the lightness, lower the saturation until we get kind of more of that sort of white there. And I think that's about right. And then we're just going to save that out. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but anything that's a little bit kind of lighter than what we've got there. And you can use that to tweak the flowers to be any color you want, really. Once we've got that, I'm then just going to go back to that material and reload in that diffuse to my white one, like so. And there you can see my flowers have changed colour. And now if we render this out, we should then have our kind of white daisies scattered across the lawn, as we've shown here. Now obviously in the preview when this comes out, you'll see it's kind of slightly grainy and we need to wait for it to sort of fully load in order to see but if you're rendering this on high resolution, you'll be able to see all of these sort of individual flowers scattered across this landscape. But I think I'm kind of happy with where that is now. So that was just a quick video tutorial looking at how we start to add in natural objects into a scene such as this. We've added in a kind of lawn using the V-Ray fur to replicate grass. And then we've scattered some flowers in sort of a random configuration across this to give the illusion of sort of small patches of flowers occurring on this surface as well. In the next video we're going to be looking at how to kind of tweak the lighting in this scene and start to add some more artificial lights here to create glows from inside the building and lighting from outside as well. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.